Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Government has appointed a committee to assess best practices for the National Health Insurance Scheme. Educators thrash out issues relating to the administering of examinations. Drainage improvement works begin at Rivia Mita. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Affordable access to quality health care is among the key areas of focus for the government of St. Lucia, outlined in a medium-term development plan for 2019-2022. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney, during the just-delivered budget address, announced that 162 million EC dollars will be invested in the health of St. Lucians at all levels. A major part of the island's health strategy is the full operation of the OKEU and the completion of St. Jude's Hospital, as well as the design and implementation of a national health insurance and the strengthening of primary and public health. A national health insurance committee has been set up to present the best model and financing options to Cabinet. Also forming the medium-term development plan is the enrollment of 7,500 students in public post-secondary or tertiary education and TVET programs, a 45% reduction in serious crimes, a 40% increase in tourist arrivals, increase in exports of bananas and cocoa, and in infrastructure, 99 kilometers of road, double airlift capacity, and 40% increase in cruise capacity. National health insurance to secure affordable access to health care services a national health fund will be established with the sole purpose of funding the national health care insurance. I wish to point out that the government will ensure that adequate provisions will be made to cover the poor and most vulnerable within our society. Cognizant of the necessary legislative and institutional changes required to facilitate the full establishment of the national health insurance scheme, the Department of Health and Wellness shall implement a pilot NHI while undertaking the necessary changes to support the system concurrently. A National Health Insurance Committee has been set up to present the best model and financing options to the Cabinet. Citizen safety will see 12 game changes in three focus areas with the goal of a 45% reduction in serious crime by the end of the strategy term in 2022 and a 30% reduction in repeat offending by that same year. This radical and long overdue approach, Mr. Speaker, will focus on better policing, greater efficiency in the legal system, the rehabilitation of offenders and the strengthening of the justice system. Crime prevention and detection will benefit from a stronger police presence in hotspots. We'll be increasing foot and mobile patrols, the front line where they are needed most. Mr. Speaker, greater surveillance capabilities are now available to the police with the building out of a $5.8 million Safe City CCT project in Castries of which 1.8 million has been allocated for 2019-2020. In addition, greater focus will be placed on community policing to strengthen the community involvement in fighting crime. And that was Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney. As thousands of St. Lucian students prepare to write examinations on the Caribbean Examination Council, Educators are busy ensuring that all issues of administration are addressed well ahead of exam time. More from Anissa Antoine. The Assessment and Evaluation Unit in the Ministry of Education recently hosted a meeting with the principals, CXC presiding officers and invigilators to discuss CXC examination preparation and other related matters. The administration reflected on the manner in which past activities and decisions transpired and highlighted ways to obtain improved results in the future. Carmelita Matthew is the Registrar of Examination in the Ministry of Education. Our purpose here remains the same. Soldiers prepare themselves for the battlefield. In the same way, our chief invigilators and their assistants need to refresh themselves in order to get acquainted with CXE standards. Our objective here today is to give you the tools needed to sufficiently carry out your responsibilities assigned to you. 
The registrar expressed her gratitude to the administrators of the 2018 CSEC, CCSLC and CAP examinations. Matthew explained that for 2019 examinations, invigilators and presiding officers would be rotated to prevent familiarization and discourage disrepute. A check of all returning paper ones will be done at the unit to ensure that the documents remain highly secured. So we are going to start doing our checks and balances. That we expected CXC to do and call us and say, oh, but we didn't receive that number when we sent that amount to your school but we will do that these checks and balances at our office in the initial phase okay we want to ensure that what we are sending to cxc is what they sent to us as we know these paper ones the multiple choice booklets are not supposed to be shared with anyone Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate and CAPE examinations will be offered in May to June 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing on its efforts to manage the present situation of an increase in influenza cases on Ireland by sensitizing public and private healthcare workers. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. Healthcare professionals were granted the opportunity to acquire information about the guidelines for the prevention and control of the measles virus for a sensitization workshop held recently. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma George says, although St. Lucia has been free of measles since 1990, it is necessary that healthcare workers are sensitized about surveillance measures as to allow for prompt interventions if cases are identified. The immunization for measles started in 1982 and our last documented case of measles in St. Lucia was in the year 1990. So as you could imagine, most of our healthcare workers would not have seen or managed a case of measles. With what is happening in the region and in the wider world, we note that the threat of a measles outbreak is coming quite closer. So we are taking a very proactive step in ensuring that all of our healthcare workers are updated and sensitized so that we can have early detection if we were to get an imported case of measles coming into the island. Dr. Belma George says it is important that children are protected against measles by getting vaccinated. We have noted that in the last five to ten years, um, some parents have chosen not to immunize their, their children. So those children who are not immunized are at risk. The measles is a viral illness, it's an acute illness, and it is one of the most infectious um, agents that you could get. So all we need is for one person with the measles virus to travel um, into St. Lucia, or for somebody from St. Lucia who's not been fully immunized to travel into an area with an outbreak. And it would now put persons who have not received their full schedule of vaccines or not immunized would be at risk for, for such a, a disease. The Medical Office of Health is appealing to parents to review their child's health card and ensure it is updated. Through the immunization program, the Department of Health and Wellness will be administering the vaccine for measles free of charge. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Efforts at building more resilient communities are continuing with works at Rivia Mita Moshi. Janelle Norville reports. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, is collaborating with the Riviera Community Development Committee with funding from the Canada Caribbean Disaster Risk Management Fund to redesign drainage and road works at Valerie Lord Avenue. The residents on Sunday, 14th April 2019, after almost 11 long years, saw the official commencement of the project. Chairman of the Riviera Development Committee, Paul Lord, explained that it is extremely difficult for motorists and pedestrians alike traversing the road, especially after heavy rainfall. He grasped the opportunity to make an appeal for even more work to be done on the road. A drain without a road is not what we, 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 we really want. But... When you have that structure, that drain structure, that means it would cost you much cheaper to have the road. So as we have the parliamentary rep here, I'm sure that 
you know, the budget is on the way, but I'm sure some allocation probably has already done somewhere along for Grozili, which can probably, right after that drain is completed, by then some of the money have been released. So that something can happen. Engineer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Len Leo, provided some insight into the project. Um, as you know, we're going to be doing about 180 meters approximately of line drain. Remember, this is a drainage project. Um, and as such, it's going to be um, executed utilizing V drains, U drains, culvert crossing to take all that um, surface runoff away. And also to have a look at the junction near the bridge going up the hill to ensure that all surface runoff, which before was probably running in a very um, haphazard way, is now controlled, directed, and sent sensibly to the nearby ravine. Um, that is what this project really entails. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment and Parliamentary Representative for Grozily Honorable Leonard Montout commended the Riviera Community Development Committee for its efforts. He indicated that like entities must work together to achieve community goals. With the government of St. Lucia soon to embark on a massive road maintenance and rehabilitation project, Minister Honorable Montwood also pledged his commitment to ensuring an improved road network for Grozily. I know the challenges that you're facing. I cannot promise you that under this project that is upcoming that all your roads will be resurfaced, but you will certainly see some improvement. You will see some work done here in this part of Riviera understand that we have a very large constituency with very many roads and i know if i do a hundred roads and i do not do yours as far as you're concerned i've done nothing so i will try to ensure that we touch a river meter <laughs> that we touch river meter because i know that for a long time you have been going through the plight of you know having to traverse those roads and I, especially when it rains i know the challenges that you face so i'm making this pledge here today and uh, while I am thankful for the part that has been done, I realize that it has put me on the spot to come up to play my part. The project is expected to be completed in six weeks. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norvell. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there's hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello and welcome once again to your update on youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The government of St. Lucia has allocated $20.6 million towards sports facilities during this financial year 2019-2020. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, the Honorable Alan Chastney, made the announcement during the tabling of the Appropriations Bill in Parliament Monday evening. These facilities will ensure our youth channel their energy into positive, healthy activity. I've said it before, and it bears repeating now, that it's better for our young people to join clubs than to join gangs. Four sports facilities have been identified initially for further development as follows. A mini stadium at Soufrer, a large sports hub at Denry, a medium sports hub in Miku North, and a community hub in Miku South. In addition, we'll soon have the School of Excellence at Grosolet, where a pilot program has already begun, in, which introduced to Form 3 as a first step of phasing in the sports curriculum. Prime Minister Chastney observed 
that these facilities will not only serve to enhance the status of sports on the island, but also to build on community spirit. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be employing adequate and relevant means to reach out to the young people of St. Lucia. Director of Youth Mary Wilfred noted that merely involving the community as a main avenue to communicate to young people does not meet the required objectives. That as a Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, we're missing this key component of reaching young people. Okay, the way we reach young people 10, 15 years ago, even three years ago, we can't reach them anymore. Yeah. Send it to the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Education, yeah. send it to the schools, and we hope the schools, the students, yeah. the students will get yeah. it. Yeah. Can't happen anymore. We can individually reach students yeah. through various platforms, yeah. and thank you for even reinforcing yeah. that this is something that we have to put money into and get young people committed to reaching you so that you get involved in the programs. Ms. Wilfred disclosed that the ministry will be using various media platforms to address youth concerns. The next main activity on the calendar for Youth Month will be Camp Kalinago, which will run from April 19 to the 21st. It is expected to provide a unique opportunity for emerging youth leaders to access leadership teaching through the mirroring of the life of the indigenous people. Candidates will develop their directorship capabilities as well as increase their knowledge of St. Lucia's early history. They will be able to advance their skills in projects and events management, budgeting and proposal writing, public relations, social media etiquette and other skills relevant to their roles on their respective councils. It is hoped participants will also develop an appreciation for the lifestyle and history of the Kalinago people and the impact of other ethnicities on their lifestyles. And that's our update on Youth Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries is conducting a survey to get your views on the proposed improvements to the William Peter Boulevard. The aim of the project is to prepare design options for making the area more pedestrian friendly as well as the facade improvement program in the boulevard area. This survey is part of an environmental and social impact assessment that must be completed as part of the project. Enumerators will be approaching businesses, vendors and pedestrians on the boulevard between Tuesday 23rd April and Tuesday 20th April 2019. The Government of St. Lucia values your opinion and therefore looks forward to your cooperation and support. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Préparation et preneur nous cachent de manger mérité à chaque proportion, particulièrement après un désastre. Millions de conseils qui créent empêcher ou joindre maladie. Fais attention au cache de manger. Examinez bien pour voir si dommage et gardez pour date où mérité pas servi encore. Le cache de viande à la main bouchée, gardez pour stomp bio libérément. En ministre santé, qui a mouché ou qui viande salade examiné et est satisfait pour vendre. Pas de viande, poisson, viande poule et bien l'autre manger qui mérite rester à souffrir pour plus qu'il. Quatre litres de vin et bien au machin. Lavez la main bien et puis savon et glou tiède avant et du moins temps ou quand entamé viande qui pour tout de suite. Servez mon sur planche et l'autre bagaille à part pour couper viande qui pas tout de suite. Mettez l'estomac manger tout de suite en fridge la même après vous servez et pas de chenille pour plus qu'il dé pour trois jours. Et que les ou qu'à vivre chauffé, fait à six et il chauffe un pile. Changez, mangez propre car un peu chez maladie ou pour caution. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, cliquez sur l'information information santé à numéro 468 secteur 49. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Merci au temps, Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement cette fois-ci. Ça, c'est GIS, Assemblée de télévision nationale pour la NTN, qui vous présente Nouvelle en Creole. Présentateur Primus Hutchinson. En continuation, rapport, rapport nous à sous présentation budget Premier ministre honorable Alain Chastney, nous avons adressé premièrement à l'assurance nationale de santé. Premier ministre Chastney déclaré que pour faire service de santé avec la pour tout le pays, 
gouvernement a établi un lot fonds, ça c'est une façon pour amasser l'argent pour financer l'assurance santé. Ça là. Le premier ministre Chasseney a renforcé le point que le gouvernement a fait assurer que l'assurance nationale de santé a embrassé les gens qui sont pauvres et qui sont plus sensibles et faibles en société. Par conséquent, le changement de législation qui est nécessaire pour faciliter l'établissement de l'institution est tellement le département de santé a implémenté un projet qui est responsable pour faire ces changements qui sont nécessaires pour supporter ce système-là, pour les gens là a un comité en place pour présenter pour le gouvernement une meilleure façon pour son travail et une meilleure façon pour financer. Le Premier ministre a mentionné l'effort qui est en place pour adresser effectivement l'opération de l'hôpital Owen King, ex saint Jude, et pour construire cette santé côté qui est plus nécessaire. Par exemple, il y a un ami qui a coûté 2 millions de dollars américains qui est mondial qui a financé. Il a annoncé aussi des nuits qui ont polyclinique tout neuf qui a coûté 4,5 millions de dollars américains. Il y a l'hôpital neuf à souffrir parmi l'autre pour gérer santé qui a coûté plusieurs millions de dollars américains. À ce autre programme, nous allons continuer à présenter et puis plus concerné le budget pour le ministre pour l'année ici et l'année prochaine. Il y a un projet pour avoir des problèmes de l'eau à commune de rivière Mita, j'ai arrivé dans un degré qui est plus avancé finalement. Il y a une petite cérémonie dimanche passé à ce val de l'Ordre Avenue. Les officiers du ministère de la construction et des travaux, les représentatifs pour la commune de rivière Mita, on va les admettre tout. Et le chemin pour le concept de l'Ordre, il y a parmi les gens qui étaient présents pour un témoignage pour la cérémonie de la le représentatif honorable Lénard Montout a commitment au gouvernement pour faire contribution pour finir le projet-là. Changement, chairman pour l'ordre, parler de si quantité longtemps il y a cassé pour contrôler si quantité de l'eau qui a affecté mon chemin ça là, l'appli qui a tombé, qui a fait impossible pour les grands citoyens et l'autre maman aussi pour servir comme doit être. L'autre déclaré qui était très plein pour l'assistance du gouvernement. Canada pour te commencer à travailler à ce projet Canal Salah. Et puis depuis, depuis en, en 19, 2009, nous avons ce projet ça. Avec, nous continuons à, à fouiller, à pousser pour lui. Et finalement, les arrivés côté de ces gens approuvé le projet et nous avons commencé le projet. Le um, projet a coûté nous à peu près. 90 000 dollars canadiens côté gouvernement, pas gouvernement, mais ministre de l'Infrastructure a assisté nous à mettre ces différents bagages en place côté nous a assuré que tout le était bon côté ce que nous avons approuvé pour le Ok, nous avons que le projet ça a apporté un nom qui a une significance. Vous voulez expliquer ça, s'il vous plaît? Oui, le projet est que nous, nous ne sais pas, nous avons commis un projet à faire ces différents places là à nous, côté, nous savons que nous voulons aller à un côté, nous savons que nous voulons aller à un côté. Et puis, la place là, nous avons fait le projet, c'est Valerie Lodge Avenue. La place là, c'est l'homme après Valerie Lodge, côté, l'incident qui a fait, combien de temps qui est passé et nous baillons nos places là, et que c'est là pour gérer à cap ou à coup. Je m'en comité pour le développement, car le gouvernement, quand il s'abaille en t-support à présent, comme il même déjà fait, quand il y a payé. Les enfants qui sont malades, et qui en l'hôpital, pour le département des enfants, l'hôpital Victoria, quand ils dormaient plus confortable qu'avant, parce qu'ils ont trouvé un cadeau soviétique et Cribs, oui, c'est plein. C'est le comité maman en Brooklyn, New York, qui fait la présentation de ça. C'est la présentation cadeau. Même le comité, Claudia Augustin, il y a un commitment pour aider les citoyens cette ici. Il dit aussi qu'il y a une bénédiction pour l'hôpital. Et qu'il continue aider n'importe qui qui trouver l'occasion pour faire ça. Nous sommes là qui sont responsables pour ces enfants. C'est seulement ça. Nous remarquons qu'il y a un commitment pour aider les citoyens cette ici. Il dit aussi qu'il y a une bénédiction pour l'hôpital. Et qu'il continue à aider n'importe qui qui trouver l'occasion pour faire ça. Nous sommes là qui sont responsables pour ces enfants. C'est seulement ça. Nous remarquons qu'il y a un commitment pour aider les citoyens cette ici. Il dit aussi qu'il y a une bénédiction pour aider les citoyens cette ici. Il dit bien protégés parce qu'ils sont toujours actifs, même s'ils si sont malades. Le comité a présenté 18 cribs pour l'hôpital 
Victoria. Et ce que ça nous a trouvé pour nous faire là, messieurs, mesdames, je vous remercie autant pour garder. Je vous remercie pour une invitation. Pour je ne puis moi encore, les gars, ils posent tout à nouvelle à Kouéol. Après ça, nous allons vivre pour Michel. Merci, on pile, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Skies are partly cloudy, becoming cloudy at times with a few scattered showers. Low-level clouds drifting with the wind flow will bring some scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.29 p.m. and will be low again at 8.53 p.m. The tide for VF4 Bay was high at 4.36 p.m. and will be low again at 10.20 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.48 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.